Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2016. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Cisco, IBM, NVIDIA, and our ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Peter Burris. We're back in the Big Apple. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. We're here at Big Data NYC. Big Data Week is part of Strata plus Hadoop World. Sean Conley is here as the Vice President of Strategy at Hortonworks, longtime friend and CUBE alum. Great to see you again. Thanks for having me. Uh, we're back at the uh, same venue last year. Always a pleasure. Yeah, it's good. It was we, we're growing, I guess yeah. the event's growing. We haven't been over there yet, but yeah. some, some of our guys have, but uh, what's it like over there? Um, you know, biz, it, it, it feels the same. Some of the you know, different uh, use cases, I think last year with streaming, we're, seeing, we're hearing more um, you know, uh, machine learning and, and things like that as far as use cases, so similar vibe. Yeah, so things are evolving, right? Mm -hmm. How's Hortonworks evolving? So, uh, you know, we're, we continue to uh, report our quarterly earnings as the uh, only publicly traded company in this space. Um, uh, things from a business perspective are, are doing well. Our, uh, our connected data platforms uh, strategy, which we unveiled at the beginning of this year, which is really around data in motion and data at rest and enabling these new gen, uh, you know, transformational applications uh, continues to play out. Um, the data in motion piece uh, is sort of decoupled and unrelated to a Hadoop platform. It's really about uh, acquiring and you know, handling the FedEx for data delivery type notions, data logistics, secure transmission. That's based on the Apache NiFi tech that was originally built sort of at the NSA over the past eight years. So really nice robust uh, piece of technology that we've pushed out to the edge uh, in our latest release so you can uh, it really skinnies down and does secure site-to-site -site transmission, um, a lot of sophisticated capabilities there. So we're seeing a lot of uptake mm -hmm. um, in that uh, you know, sort of architectural vision, the products are maturing, um, both on-prem and in the cloud, and you know, things are uh, pretty exciting. Well, the, this cloud thing seems pretty real. You get <laughs> a lot of traction, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody kind of knew it was coming, but what are you seeing? Yeah, so it was, um, you know, I, I guess I started the journey back in 2009, um, when I was at SpringSource and Paul Moritz was CEO of VMware. And that was pre sort of cloud at that time. We were talking about this notion of platform as a service and, and things like that. And that resonated really well with folks back then, but they were, their main ask was how do you solve the data problem? How do you actually get the data to the apps that need it? Um, fast forward to 2016, I think, it's been a lot of open source innovation, you know, a lot of uh, uh, commercial innovation, um, the rise of cloud for, um, Providing you know a fast path to value, um, booting up these use cases. It's a you know it's a fascinating uh, transition uh, to watch. Um, many of our customers are you know people use the word hybrid. Um, what that means to me is they'll have uh, data center workloads or multi data center workloads. They also have cloud workloads, sometimes even multi cloud workloads, and that inherent nature of the beast is why I use sort of the. Uh, uh, the term of connected data architecture is you need an architecture that inherently is built to span that fact, and that's just increasing. That's just the world we live in today. But the fact is because there are speed of light issues, there's data fidelity issues, yep. there's other types of things. How are you starting to see those practical and very physical realities start to impact the whole concept of design as it pertains to data, yep. as it pertains to analytics, as it pertains to the infrastructure associated with the two. Yep, so um, at Hadoop Summit in, that we had in last June, there were really some really good sessions that were there. Um, folks like Com Comcast, Ford, uh, Schlumberger talked about this you know, connected data architecture reality, right? Um, if you look at like, I, I like to use the connected car uh, ecosystem as a good example, because there were insurance providers and others that were sort of speaking on behalf of that, where you have the cars and other data that's inherently born up there, and there's a slug of use cases that are around edge analytics, streaming analytics, time series analytics, um, and we're seeing that, and, and I think the cloud lends itself really well for those types of uh, use cases. But we also see manufacturing line data for the cars, where you want to get a 360 degree view of operational issues, and dovetail that with manufacturing line elements. And that's inherently what we've seen is what your classic sort of on-prem data lake in quotes have been, has been used for so you can get that 360 degree operational intelligence type uh, 
you know, uh, analytics that come out of that, right? So that type of use case, whether you apply it to oil and gas and having the sensors on the uh, oil rigs in the Schlumberger example, that pattern is repeating itself across different industries. Um, uh, British gas uh, in Europe talks about how they're fundamentally changing the nature of their relationship with their customer uh, because of the uh, smart meters and their connectivity into the homes and they can deliver a better value there. So that's inherently a connected data uh, realm. There's cloud use cases and in the data center use cases. Um, and so I, I see these use cases you know, there will be use case specific and applications that are sprinkled across that fabric, if you will, right? Um, and that's, that's really what we're seeing. At our panel last year here in this venue, we were talking about a lot of things. One was the market, the sort of ebbs and flows. You just mentioned you guys are the only public player. Uh, Talon's joining yeah. you know, that crew. Excellent. Um, you've seen some... We need more. We need more. <laughs> we've, seen, we've seen some M&A, right? Platform yep. taken out. I don't know if that was, I, I don't know the, the specifics of that deal. It might have been an AccuHire, might not, I, I don't know. Uh, and a data mirror did a raise, you know, so you're seeing these rip currents in all directions. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing in the marketplace? Um, you know, a lot of funding early on, you yep. know, a lot of players, a lot of innovation, and now it's like, okay, the music at some point's going to stop, but, you know, <laughs> Yeah, so what you, what's your take? Yeah, so in our last call, and I think we, we repeated it on uh, prior earnings calls, uh, you know, our focus, and then we put uh, out, out there in the earnings, and our Q3 earnings, we'll sort of reiterate where we stand, is um, we basically said Q4 is when we uh, look to go adjust the EBITDA break even, right. and then uh, 2017 we'll go from there. We reiterated that guidance. Um, we had, you know, a little over 62 million in billings for the quarter, um, so the business is pretty robust and growing. It's a we're only five years into this. I mean, we're just five years old, so it's a very fast pace of, uh, you know, uh, billings growth, right? That's a, almost a 250 million run rate, right, for uh, exiting that quarter, um, you know, annual run rate. So um, we see uh, a lot of the use cases really um, continuing to move on. I think what I, and what our customers ask us is, they're on a digital transformation journey and they want the industry to start talking about those types of uh, business value drivers, right? So I think we'll ex we should expect to see a transition from the piece parts animals in the zoo and what right, what's the right open source piece of technology and more why should you care, right, as a business? Um, how is this transforming what you do? How does this open up new lines of business? We started seeing that in, uh, at Hadoop Summit when uh, I think about two dozen customers were sharing very rich uh, stories, right? So that's where things are. But I think running a company is you have to, you have to run it with a certain sense of rigor and that was one of the reasons why we chose to go public, right? So, mm -hmm. we, by the way, we totally agree that, uh, that uh, customers want to stop talking about digital business and platitudes. Mm -hmm and start actually identifying specifically what is it about it that's new and different and find ways of doing it. Sure. Um, coming back to the issue, however, of how you go about making some of those transformations relevant, there is clearly a knowledge gap about what digital business is, what it isn't, certainly, but there's also a fair amount of skills that have yet to be developed that are required for a lot of the use cases that companies are pursuing not just in terms of implementing the technology appropriately, but actually constructing and conceptualizing the use cases. Sure. So that suggests that there's two paths forward. There's a path forward where we can do a better job of diffusing knowledge through people, and there's a path forward where we can do a better job of building software that's easier to use. Mm -hmm. And there's both. How do you see this playing out over the course of the sure. next few years? Yeah, and I think in any new area as technology is emerging, like one of the things I use is Apache Software Foundation. Literally every other week there's a new data related Apache project that lands. So it's, it could be really confusing, but it's exhilarating from the fact of I participate in that and I try and figure out what, what ones we can harness in a consumable platform, whether it's on-prem or cloud or what have you. What use cases can it, can it light up? So I think you have both of those vectors and it really depends on I like to use the, uh, you know, the classic software adoption curve. 
you have a lot of the left side of the chasm folks where a lot of this new stuff is going to be sharper edges and they're always going to be trailblazers, right? But um, we are also seeing a lot of, uh, you know, some of these advanced analytics, some of these new solutions are automating the pipeline. So you can actually let the, you know, let the infrastructure and these engines do more of the thinking for you so you get your models output. Even to the point where you run multi-model simulation in parallel and out pops the best fit. That's where things will head, right? Um, I think it's just a matter of you know, the technology maturing, making sure we address things like security, metadata management, governance, and those illities that the enterprise expects, and then really forcing ourselves to simplify and automate as much as possible, right? And that was one of the reasons on that last one, why in October 2011, um, we basically chose Teradata and Microsoft as key partners. Teradata, because in 2011, clearly, right? They're Teradata. You know, they're Teradata, right? Microsoft, because it simplifies technologies and brings, it, brings them to billions of users, right? And so we need to do both. You need to harden it, right, for the most rigorous large enterprises, but you need to simplify it for you know, the meat of the market adopters, right? The early majority and late majority. You have well, to Sean, do both. You, Sean, you're sitting across from a CEO and you have to say, these are the three things you need to do to enact this digital transformation. Yep. What are the three things you're telling them? So, um, you know, I think they need as a business to identify how do they want to leverage data as capital and w what pockets of value do they want to go chase, number one. Number two, how is their business being impacted by the fact that you have um, the rise of IoT in an inherently increasingly connected society and infrastructure? Um, how is that impacting them? Um, and, and number three is how do they ev how do they evolve what they're used to doing, right? The new <laughs> um, practices. Align it. Exactly. Because that's right? really, in many respects, a, I like to say there's a difference between invention and innovation. Invention is the engineering act, innovation is a social act. It's adopting those yep. new practices exactly. that actually allow you to enact the invention and generate value. Exactly. Now, in our space, we I think we have a very compelling, um, you know, renovate uh, value prop, which is a cost savings where you can drive costs out but the innovate use cases are the ones, I was like, if all you're going to do is renovate, then you will fail, you will stall, right? Because it's not about cost savings, it's about how do you actually transform your business. And in the case of like the British gas example, I use that as how they engage that end consumer is fundamentally changing, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so that's the question I put back in those conversations is, how do you want to evolve your business and how do you leverage data as capital? Because the beauty of data as capital is you can actually generate multiple lines of interest off of a single data set because you can, you can derive different insights off of that. So it's not like a dollar, right, and single compound. It's multiple compound annual interest rate on that. But they have to chase the right use cases. Although we've also learned from great design that if you do the right thing better, you get rid of a lot of waste, and so coming back yep. to your point, doing the right thing better often leads to cost savings. Yes, exactly. One inherently can drive the other, but if you're just driving it, then just doing you're cost, not going to transform your business. You're just going to continue to do the same exactly. or the wrong things worse. Exactly. Or wrong things cheaper. And that's, you know, that's uh, difficult for enterprises because there's a certain way to do data management inherently inside in a highly structured manner, but I do think the rise of, um, like IoT, I don't see as a market. I see it as uh, infinite slices of prosciutto, right? <laughs> it's a very thinly sliced set of market opportunities, right? But it's forcing people to think about different use cases and how that might impact their business. We see this set of right? capabilities, yep. which leads to the prosciutto. Exactly. So yeah. you, you <laughs> and, yeah, and, and it come up with a really yeah. nice sandwich. That's, you, <laughs> <laughs> that's my Italian. Let's Sorry, keep going. Good, hey, I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm getting a little hungry. You so. have um, always made a big deal out of your partnerships, not being Barney deals, but being deep integration yes. relationships. So you mentioned two here, Teradata and Microsoft. Mm -hmm. As the cloud becomes more prevalent as things you know evolve and machine learning becomes the hot buzzword, et cetera. How have you evolved those relationships, specifically in terms of the integration work yeah. that you've done? Have you kept up that engineering ethos? Well, and, and that was the thing. Like when with Microsoft, we clearly um, 
spend a lot of sweat equity on the Azure HD Insight service, but if you look at that ecosystem, they have Azure Machine Learning, right? They have a whole raft of um, services, right, that you can apply to the data when it's in the cloud, right? So um, how that piece integrates with the broader ecosystem of services is a lot of engineering work as well. I've always said there's work to be done in our green box, but half, the other half of the work is how it plums into the rest. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at the AWS ecosystem, how do you optimize for S3 as the storage tier and ephemeral workloads where HDFS is a, maybe a caching mechanism, but it's not your primary storage, right? Um, it, it brings up really interesting integration uh, modes and how you actually bring your value out into really interesting use cases, right? So um, I think it's opened up a lot of areas where we can drive a lot more integration, drive the open source tech in a way that's relevant for those use cases. All right, we got to go, but uh, Summit in Tokyo, was it next month? Yes, end right? of October. Of October. Um, it's our first time. So primarily summits have been US and Europe. Um, we had Melbourne, uh, end of August, and we have uh, Tokyo, end of October. I'll be, uh, you'll, I'll, they're bringing the right hander out of retirement, so I'll be on stage <laughs> in Tokyo. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've usually been behind the scenes on the last Throw one. Throw the slurve. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it. It'll be exciting. All right, good, and then 17, uh, you're going to start again in the spring. You're yep. in Munich. Yep, Munich. Right? We were in Dublin last year. You're moving to Munich exactly. this year. Hopefully the yep. Cube so will be we'll back continue. in Munich. All right, we, we love Let's you guys. Let's make it happen. So you guys it's great. Do a good job. Good. Good stuff in Europe, so thanks yep. again for yep. coming. Thanks on for having me. Always a pleasure. Yep. All right, keep it right there. We'll be back right after this short break. This is theCUBE, we're live from New York City.